Hello and welcome to today's devotion. We are still in Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus. Last devotion, we focused on verses 15, 16, 17, and focused on Paul's love for the saints. Today we're going to look at the same verses, but focus on this thing called believing and knowing. So this is verse 15. And before we go into verse 15, actually, if we would pray and pray together. Lord, we thank you for your word, for your promises, for your spirit that enlightens us, draws us close to you without your spirit drawing us to desire you, to know you. We would be adrift. We would be lost thinking that we had it all together. But deep down, beyond the level of awareness, realizing, knowing that we are lost. And so we give you thanks because you have called us. You've opened our eyes to see a truth that transcends the limitations of this world and ushers us into a great love, a great promise, a great hope that's more sure than the passing of this world. And this we thank you for in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 5 of chapter 1, Paul writes, This is why, since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I never stop giving thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. These two verses we covered last devotion, and now into verse 17. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, would give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what is the wealth of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the mighty working of his strength. There is a difference, but yet a connection between believing and knowing. Sometimes you may have heard of the phrase blind faith. Well, in Christianity, there is no blind faith. There is a faith based on knowledge. Even when you go to the Old Testament, as we call it, the first people called by God, one of those being Abraham, Abraham was called to leave everything that he was familiar with, everything that he knew. And knowing something from a biblical perspective is not knowing something because you analyzed it or you studied it or you observed it or you theoretically were taught the theories regarding it. Knowing something is experiencing it and knowing it in an experiential manner. That's not the way we understand knowledge today. Today, we approach knowledge and we understand knowledge not in the same way that the biblical understanding of knowledge is represented, but from a standpoint of scientific revelation, if you will, observation. One does not need to be involved in it. One does not have to be engaged in it. One does not have to have it affect them or personally be in relationship with it. All one has to do is observe it. And that's a different knowledge than what biblical knowledge relates. Biblical knowledge has always been based on experience. And so when Abraham was called to leave his familiar territory and his family, the place where he grew up and lived, when he was called to leave that, he was called to go into a place that he was unfamiliar with, a place that he did not know. But he did not 
he did not follow through on that calling in a blind manner. He followed that calling based on knowledge. In other words, while he was called to go to an unfamiliar place, he had the knowledge, the experiential knowledge, that God was going with him. And spiritual knowledge is just as real as any other knowledge that we have. In fact, it is more real. And so, when Paul is praying or relating his prayer to the people that live in Ephesus, he prays that they grow in this revelation of knowledge. And it is truly a revelation. It is a continuous spiritual experience that expands on itself. That's true of any relationship. Any relationship that we're involved in, whether it's a career, whether it's a relationship with our family or our friends or our community, is a continuous revelation and growth, expansion, if you will, of the other person as we experience things together. And this is the Christian experience that grows our awareness and, as Paul says, enlightens us. We go through things with God together, and the shared experience is what creates intimacy, and intimacy, by its very nature, expands our awareness of the other person that we're in, uh, intimate with. So when we say we trust in God, it's not so much limited to making sure that we have the right doctrine or the right formulas about God. That is important to be sure. But it certainly doesn't end there. It's the beginning step. For as we grow in our awareness, what God will do in leading us by his spirit is bring us through various experiences in which as we go through these experience with God through prayer and if you if you take a look at this these verses that we've been reading Paul is talking about his prayer Prayer life is just not something that you put into a, a category or you cubbyhole it or you pigeonhole it into a time of day. It is literally a, where of a way of life in which we are in continuous awareness, sometimes talking directly to God, sometimes listening, sometimes just being very quiet and seeing what God will do. But it is a continuous process of walking with God. God. And as we walk with God and continue to press into God and invest in that relationship, we become increasingly aware of his presence. And as such, we increase in our experience of God and subsequent knowledge of God. It is, is, is it important to read the scriptures and gain knowledge from them? Yes, we gain invaluable knowledge from them, essential knowledge from the scriptures. But the scriptures alone will not allow us to grow in our faith without experiencing God and a relationship with God in this life on a continuous basis. And so as Paul is writing this, praying in verse 18 that the eyes of their hearts may be enlightened so that they may know what is the hope it's not that they didn't know the hope of the resurrection. It just became increasingly real to them as they grew in their faith, as they walked with God daily, increasing their awareness of God through their prayer life. This is the, the point, if you will, or the, the fruit of a prayer life is that we get to know God. And so, my friends in Christ, don't give up. When you feel as if you've come to the end of your rope, don't stop leaning into God, listening to God, being quiet and seeking God, for he will be found. And the experience that you share with him, it will be invaluable. You recognize that in the long run. 
Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Till then, you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.